1826, George Simon Ohm, a German physicist, carried out experiments with different metal wires. While he was carrying out these experiments with different metal wires, he discovered something that will be the basis for our discussion. In each of these wires, he was measuring the potential difference across each of those wires, and he was also measuring the current that was going through these wires. And in his investigations, he came to this conclusion that the ratio of the potential difference between the ends of the conductors or the ends of these wires to the current flowing through each of these wires was constant. Now, this relationship between the potential difference across the wires and the current going through each of these wires is what we call Ohm's law. Now, in this video, we are going to look into Ohm's law experimentally and see how we can also arrive at this relationship. Now, right before us, we are having a circuit diagram. In this circuit diagram, we are having a dry cell. It is just one dry cell. It is connected to an ammeter and then real start. Then the real start is connected to a certain wire. This red thing you're seeing is just a representation of the wire. In, the, in my experiment, I will use a constantine wire. This, the, the terminals of this constantine wire are connected across a voltmeter. And this voltmeter is definitely going to be measuring the potential difference across this constantine wire. And then this continues to a switch. This is how we are going to connect our circuit following this circuit diagram. Of course, if you look at this cell, this long end is the positive terminal. This short one is the negative terminal. So we are going to connect the negative terminal to the ammeter at this point. So looking at us, I had already connected the circuit. If you look at this, this is our ammeter right there because of that A, it's our ammeter. And of course, our ammeter, we are connecting. This is the dry cell we are talking about. This is the negative terminal of the battery, and that's the positive terminal. So we are going to connect the negative terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the ammeter. And of course, it is always black. The red ones are where the positive ones are connected. So we connect the negative to there. And then we, this is where... The circuit continues to the real start. This is our real start right here. We are connecting one of the wires right here. Current is going to go through here and go through one of those coiled wires and it will get out from here via this wire. The electrons flowing from negative. So this is our real start and it's having a maximum of up to 20 ohms. So uh, our real start is right there. So we connect the terminal that is leading out of the real start. We connect it to our wire. Now our wire right here is from our real start. We connected this to our constantin wire. We have held our constantin wire onto a ruler right here. So we fastened it onto a ruler. And so our constantin wire is held right there up to there. And of course, uh, if you look at our circuit diagram, this continues up to the switch and this right here is our switch this is so we, if we had to complete the circuit or to close the switch we simply get this and close it there and the switch starts working but for now it is still open and definitely of course the other, the other terminal of the switch is going to lead to the dry cell just like the circuit diagram says so this is our circuit diagram and so now of course we are going to now uh, connect this voltmeter across this now the issue here is we want to investigate Ohm's law. Now this is the conductor we shall be using to investigate Ohm's law or to verify it. Now this conductor will be having current going through it. Now this current that is going to run through this conductor will be regulated by this rheostat. So it means that as we regulate this rheostat we will be regulating how much current goes through this rheostat. Then this voltmeter is responsible for measuring the potential difference across the ends of this wire, this constant in wire. So in our connections, we are supposed to be very careful that the voltmeter is supposed to be connected correctly. This is the negative terminal of the battery. So it means that you're supposed to connect that the negative terminal to of the battery to the voltmeter correctly and this other part the positive terminal of the battery is supposed to be connected to the voltmeter correctly just like the way we did with the ammeter 
Regarding how to correctly connect a voltmeter and an ammeter into the circuit, I explained that in detail in the previous video. According to our circuit diagram, this is the negative part from the cell, the negative part of the cell right here. So it means that we're supposed to connect this negative to the voltmeter correctly. So it means that if you look at our voltmeter, the negative portion is here. So if you're to follow our circuit here, this is our, our rheostat. It, the wire gets out of here, gets to this point. So with this terminal here, this wire is supposed to be connected to the negative part right there. And again, to determine where to, put, to where, whether to place the positive here or the positive there, I explained that in the previous video in detail on how we choose which terminal to connect here. The same with the current. On where you, whether you, on how to choose this or that, I explained that previously in our video. So we continue with our experiment. So this is connected to the other terminal of the wire, which is right here. These are crocodile clips are the ones we are using to connect to the ends of this wire, the Constantin wire. So definitely, and this connects to the switch. So after connecting our circuit like that, it only requires us to close the switch. And when we close the switch, we're able to get the voltmeter reading and the ammeter reading from our circuit here. So now that we've set up the apparatus, how do we conduct this experiment? So first of all, we are going to close this. We close the switch. After closing the switch, it means that our current is moving through the circuit. And if you could click here, our current has, our ammeter has deflected a bit. I don't know if you can see it. The voltmeter is already deflected also and the current. Now, of course, this is our real start. We shall adjust our real start. We can adjust our real start anyhow to vary the, the, the resistance. Now we adjust it in such a way that our resistance is very big and the current is reading small. So we want to start from a very small current and then we keep on increasing. Now I'll just demonstrate how we do the experiment. So what we do here is number one, we are going to adjust the real start here to start with a large value of resistance. That means if it's the large value of resistance, it will be reflected by a very small amount of current. So when we start with the large value of resistance, next is we read and record the ammeter reading and the voltmeter reading. Now our large, for example here, our current here is reading 0 .0 0.1 amperes right here. So 0 0.1 amperes and our voltage, the corresponding voltage across the wire is reading 0 0.2 volts. 0 0.1 here, here it's reading 0 0.2 volts our voltage so while after we've read we read that very fast then we open our switch we record the ammeter reading and the voltmeter reading the ammeter reading and voltmeter reading are recorded in a table like this in this column when we measure the ammeter reading we write the ammeter reading here in amperes and then the voltmeter reading right there then after that we continue with our experiment and adjust the real start to get other values. So in simple terms, we are going to adjust this real start. When we adjust this real start, we close the switch and we are able to get new values of, um, of current. So we shall repeat this experiment like that by changing the real start. As we keep changing the real start, we keep getting new values of A and V. Every time you change the real start, you measure the new value of current and the new value of voltage. You can do it like five, six times so that you're able to get values of current and values of potential difference. As you get the values of current and potential difference and you plot them in a table like this, then you will go ahead and you draw a graph. You draw a graph of potential difference V against I. And when you plot the graph of potential difference V against I, you will come up with a straight line. When you plot your graph of voltage against current, you will realize that current is directly proportional to voltage. By saying that current is directly proportional to voltage, I simply mean that every time the amount of current increases, voltage also increases. When current increases to this level, voltage also increases to that level. When current increases to that 
amount, voltage also increases to that amount. So from our experiment, we are able to see that voltage is directly proportional to current. Now, if voltage is directly proportional to current, this means that the slope of this graph is going to give us a constant figure. Or it means that when we get the amount of voltage at each of these points and divide it with the amount of current, we are going to get a constant figure or call it a constant. And this constant is what we are calling resistance of this circuit. So this brings us to Ohm's law. So from Ohm's law, he simply stated and concluded after that experiment that the current through a metallic conductor is always directly proportional to the voltage or to the potential difference across the ends provided temperature and other physical conditions are held constant. Now, if you look at this table of results from an experiment carried out earlier, you'll find that for every amount, this is the, these are the amount, the current, and this is the potential difference. When we divide V by I, we get a constant, and this constant is what we are calling resistance. And this resistance is measured in ohms. It was named after the guy who found this out. And looking at Ohm's law, emphasis is placed on the metal conductor. And this is because other materials behave differently. Materials like nichrome wire are not so much affected by temperature conditions and so in most cases nichrome wire is always used in these kinds of experiments. Me, I used Constantin wire and well, Constantin is also not that bad either. It gets the work done. So looking at this law, we are able to see that voltage, they are telling us that current is directly proportional to voltage. So it means that um, V is directly proportional to I. Oh, current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the ends of that conductor. But now if we are to remove that proportionality sign, it means we're supposed to in in introduce a constant of proportionality. And it means that this is going to become V is going to be equal to K times I. That is, if to remove this proportionality sign, we introduce a constant of proportionality. And that constant of proportionality so happens to be the resistance of that conductor. So it means that V is equal to R times I. And if we are to make this R the subject of the formula, we know that resistance is going to be equal to V over I. Just like in our table of results, we're able to show that R is equal to V over I. It's constant all through from all the values that we got in our experiment. Now this constant of proportionality R is called the resistance and this resistance is in ohms. It was named ohms after the inventor himself George Simon Ohm.